Hi, my name's Mark Miller. I'm in town here in Austin, Texas, uh, talking about this new Kick-Ass movie that's an adaptation of a book by myself and John Romita Jr. Thank you for uh, sitting with us, Mark. Um, now, first, uh, how do you feel? Like, I mean, obviously, tremendous success in comics, so how do you feel like that just crossover between Hollywood and comics for you? Just as a fan, I love it. Like, as a kid, I dreamed of things like a Fantastic Four movie or, you know, just a Spider-Man film that actually where he, where he swung around on webs on like the old TV show that I used to watch and my bro I remember my brother saying to me that'll never happen and I'm like how come they said there'll never be technology that can make it look as if a guy's stretching or that a guy's on fire like, how can it possibly happen and we never anticipated CG and everything you know and I just I feel as if we're finally in the world I've always wanted to live in where there's a 300 million dollar Spider-Man film out there you know just for exactly like someone like me is going to enjoy and I just loved that world since 1999 when Stephen Norrington did Blade. And he never really gets the credit for it, you know. But he kind of changed the way superhero films were done. And Brian Singer used a lot of those things in X-Men. And then Sam Raimi, a year after that, came in and did Spider-Man that you've never seen before. The Batman movies, it's just been wonderful. So I think the comic Hollywood thing's been amazing for Hollywood. Really amazing for Hollywood. It's been the bulk of business recently. Um, and uh, been great for comics. And people say it doesn't really help sales, but it, it does. And the book sales just go through the roof. All those girls that love Hugh Jackman are coming in buying Wolverine books now in Barnes & Noble. It's great. So the flip side of that, like, have you ever seen the Roger Corman Fantastic Four? Yeah, see, I, I like that, actually. <laughs> and I ended up out drinking one night about five years ago with a guy who played uh, Doctor Doom. And it, and it was really weird. I was just sitting in a bar. I was on my own. Um, at, a convention somewhere, I can't remember where it was, and he was a guest, and we just got chatting, and I was sitting drinking with him all night, and he just mentioned in passing, oh yeah, yeah, I played Doctor Doom in uh, the Fantastic Four movie, like, you know, and he's quite menacing looking stuff, yeah. <laughs> um, so like, uh, I mean, you say that you love the adaptations, um, but like, uh, if you've seen like the Marvel animated stuff, like how do you feel, like, um, especially like with, with your creations, like in Wanted, and mm. um, you know, with Kick-Ass, like, you know, would you rather like a faithful adaptation on the animated side, or would you? Uh, do you still really enjoy seeing your creation? Just come on, there's nothing cooler than you know seeing your name and Angelina Jolie's name in the same line. I mean, anybody who says otherwise is lying. You know, it's cool. I mean, to to be on the set and you suddenly see as one of your characters Angelina Jolie or Nick Cage or somebody or Morgan Freeman, you say, this is fantastic. It's, it's amazing. So no, I wouldn't swap it for the world. You know, and it just I mean, I was very as a producer unwanted and. Kick-Ass philosophical with any changes. There's virtually no changes with Kick-Ass from the book. It's like 95% the book. There's like two things that they changed and it was, you know, in terms of the beats of the movie, it changed nothing. Um, Wanted, the first half of the film was exactly our first two issues and uh, I loved it and the second half was great. The Loom stuff was a bit weird but um, but it worked, you know, and, and in the end it was a great movie. Hollywood Reporter, Variety, both gave it five stars and made $341 million. I mean, I can't believe I was that lucky first time out. I mean, most people have rubbish for a while, and if you're lucky, you get a good movie. And I lucked out with Timur, Morgan Freeman, Angelina, all of my first films. Crazy luck. You know? So, like, uh, looking at one of your creations that yeah. um, probably wouldn't work on the big screen. Yeah. I mean, like, how would you feel? Like, I mean, or even have you been approached about zombies going somewhere? About what, sir? Like Marvel zombies? Uh, well. It just, it's impossible, you know, I mean, for a, a few reasons, like, I don't see a penny out of any Marvel Zombie stuff, I, even though I created it, um, I did it as a work for hire agreement, which is fair enough, and it just gets used without, I don't get any money out of the statues or the comic books or any of that stuff, plus the zombies are made up of a bunch of characters that are owned by different studios, so they'll never, as far as I know, there'll never be a movie of that kind of thing. What about, like, on the stuff. animated side? That's possible, you know, but again, I'd see nothing, I mean, I saw nothing out of the Ultimates. The Avengers movie is supposed to be an adaptation of my Ultimates book. And the Cap movie, you know, has a lot of stuff in it with the Triscate. You know, from right here, you know, just a lot of stuff from the uh, uh, the first volume of the Ultimates. Um, but that's just the deal you sign. And I can never complain about it because the Ultimates was really good to me. You know, I mean, it, that and the Authority and Superman Red Sun and so on kind of made my name back in the early part of the decades. And it afforded me the opportunity to go and do things that Wanted and Kick-Ass would I own the material. And let's face it, nobody would have bought Wanted, nobody would have bought Kick-Ass if I hadn't done books like The Ultimates and so on previously. So I'm quite philosophical about it. I think I'd hate it if I'd never gone on and done Creator Owned. I'd maybe feel slightly ripped off, but it's just all part of the process, you know, and I'd had a great time doing it, and I wish the guys all the best with the movie, yeah.